given to me lately. Thanks be to God for all that he has done for us, especially since the third Sunday of March of last year, all the way up to the fourth Sunday of July of this year. Thank you to the uh, Mount Sinai COVID crisis ministry, all of the members of that team, and to the custodial group uh, for the work put forth to prepare for our worship today. Thanks to the Mount Sinai family for your obedience over the last year and some months, and your obedience to giving a portion back to the Lord as he has blessed each of us. Thank each of you for the numerous times that you found your way uh, to tune in to YouTube over that time period to view the Bible studies and sermons posted weekly. And last but not least, thank Lamona Jackson, my wife, for continued work uh, that she has provided not only as she stood with me, but as she has worked by my side weekly to provide an opportunity for your growth. Yeah. Our text for today is found in the book of Deuteronomy. 
chapter 5, and I'll read from the English Standard Version, I believe it is, uh, yes, the English Standard Version, verses 24 through 27. That's Deuteronomy chapter 5, beginning with verse 24. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 24 through 27. It reads, And you said, Behold, the Lord our God has shown us his glory and greatness, and we have heard his voice out of the midst of the fire. This day we have seen God speak with man, and man still live. Now therefore, why should we die? For this great fire will consume us. If we hear the voice of the Lord our God anymore, we shall die. For who is there of all flesh that has heard the voice of the living God speaking out of the midst of fire as we have and have and and has still lived go near and hear all that the lord our god will say and speak to us that the lord our god will speak to you and we will hear and do it Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 24 through 27. Thank you for standing in recognition of the importance of God's word for us day by day. I want to speak for a few minutes on a subject of don't forget. Don't, don't forget. Usually, well, let me pray first. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for all that you have done. Now we ask that you would help us to not forget how you brought us over. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Usually when you get past what you've been going through, we tend to take that opportunity to celebrate God's goodness for bringing us through. But I want to remind us today that now is not the most important time in our lives. But we need to not forget all that the Lord has brought us through since March the third Sunday of March of last year. Because if we celebrate too not much now, then what we went through won't mean that much to us. It will have the kind of profound effect on our lives that God intended. Now, God's great design in all of his works is that his glory might be manifested. That his glory might be made visible to us. All that we went through with the pandemic, God's design for it is that we might see his glory. Grandmama used to say, it's hard to see God's glory. The best way to see God's glory is to look back over your shoulder. Because so often when the Lord is bringing us through what we're in, our focus is on what we're going through and how long. Glory as used of God is it's deemed particularly appropriate to, for describing his moral uniqueness. 
describing his grandeur as Lord of the universe. In a nutshell, God's glory is the right to be acknowledged as supreme. God, because of what he has brought us through, has the right to be acknowledged as our supreme God. And any aim less than this would be unworthy of himself. As I mentioned a few minutes ago, our parents, and especially our grandparents, reminded us that even though it's unusual to observe God's glory while he works in our tragedy, yet we can always look back and see where God has brought us from and what he has brought us through. We can attest to the fact that we've been through a tragic time lately. And when we look back for the first time in our lives, hospitals have been filled so much with disease that the protocol was changed. And even pastors were not allowed into the hospitals for fear of spreading the disease. For the first time in our lives, a vaccine has been developed while we were waiting on it to be certified for our use. But how shall the glory of God be manifested to such as us, fallen creatures, saved only by his grace? Mankind, our eyes are, are, are not single. Part of the time we're trying to look at the Lord. But then other times we, we, we're focused on a side glance towards our own honor and our own glory. We have too high of an estimate of our own power. And because of that, we are not qualified to behold, to look at the glory of God unless he allows it. It is clear that self must stand out of the way that there may be room for God to be exalted. And that's why it's important not that we celebrate too much today because we'll be talking about how I made it over instead of how God brought me. Every step of the way through toils and dangers, God brought us. And we have to look back at some things that he brought us through. And that he was with us every step of the way. In tragic times, it's easy to see that God is a promise keeper. He promised never to leave us, never to forsake us. And for the last 16 or 18 months, God has never left us. Every night when he walked us to sleep, he didn't go to sleep. He was right there watching over us. And not only was he watching, but he had angels watching over us all night long. He never, he never uh, was out of pocket when we needed Food to eat. Questions to go on our backs. He was never somewhere where he could not hear our cry when we needed uh, food on the table, a, a shelter over our head. He was always right by our side. And for that, he's worthy of all the glory and all of the honor. This is the reason why he often brings his people into straits 
and difficult times. That being made conscious of our foolishness and our weaknesses, then we may be fitted to behold the majesty of God when he comes to work in our deliverance. When our lives are level and smooth and the path is straight, we'll see just a little of his glory. But it's then that we only have a few occasions for self-emptiness. And we need to learn how to empty ourselves so that God can fill us. If we would learn how to empty ourselves, then hurt wouldn't hurt so much. Darkness would not be so dark. If we would just learn to empty ourselves then we would be fit to receive the revelations of God. It's been said that they who navigate little streams, Reverend Brasley, you ought to know what I'm talking about. They who navigate little streams and shallow creeks know little of God, but when you put them in a hurricane, when you put them in a tornado, they who are doing dangerous business on great waters see his wonders works in the deep. Among the huge waves of bereavement, of poverty, of temptations and disaster, we learn the power of Jehovah because we feel the littleness of ourselves. Thanks be to God. If you have been led by a rough road, it is this that has given you your experience of God's greatness and love and kindness. I remember like it was yesterday when I was going through life not taking time to smell the roses. But then when God knocked me to my knees, when he took my family from me, and I could not do anything to correct things, to, to, to put the ship upright, I cried out to the Lord. And he heard my cry. The last 18 months, there have been a lot of crying to the Lord. But I believe I'm not the only one that knows that he heard. Yeah. I will cry and pity yeah. every bone. Yeah. Brother Lily, that's why I still stand by the fact that as long as I live and trouble rise, I will hasten to his throne. This pandemic has enriched us with a wealth of knowledge. To be gained by no other means, our trials have been uh, the crevice of our lives. Just like the crevice that God placed Moses in this story so that he could see his glory and still live. It is God's glory that we can behold as we have passed through the last 18 months. God deserves our praise that we have not been left in darkness and ignorance that continues uh, when prosperity is dominant, but that in the great fight of affliction, we have been qualified for the outshine of God's glory and his wonderful dealings with us. Our God is doing wonderful things in our lives moment by moment. Just think about it. If you would put your hand over your chest and feel your heart beat. 
moment by moment. But what if you put your hand there and it didn't feel the heartbeat? Moment by moment, God is blessing us. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18 said, Thank God, and this is the message version. Thank God no matter what happens. Well, this is the way God wants us to be who belong to Jesus Christ. That's the way he wants us to live. Today is a good day for us to focus on what God has done over the last 18 months. And then we can see his glory. He did a wonderful job. He brought us every step of the way. Just like one Friday. On an old rugged cross, on a hill called Calvary, none of us have been able to not even do a film of that story. But every now and then, I can look back over my shoulder, looking through the word that he has left us, and see that he died. Didn't he die? They took him down and they buried him in a borrowed tomb. He was there three days, but all that. Well, Joe Nina, you gonna help me out? All that. The third day morning, all that. Sunday morning, he rose with all the power in heaven and in earth in his hand. In the last 18 months, all that we've gone through, he's demonstrated his omnipotence as he has worked to bring us through. 